Hi, welcome to the Camino Cafe. We are thrilled once again to have Maria Seco with us from Spanish for the Camino. And Maria always has a great Spanish lesson lined up for us so that we can do a better job communicating when we are on the Camino. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So Maria. Thank you, Lee. Okay, so today we are going to talk about travel, transport, which might not seem like the most Camino related topic uh, at first sight, but well, just think that, okay, you have to get to Spain. So you have to get most likely on a plane, get to an airport. Once you get there, well, Spain or yeah, um, get to the airport. Once there, you will probably have to take buses, trains, taxis you know to get to your starting point or where you when you finish to get back to an airport or wherever you're traveling from and even while on the Camino you might need sometimes you know to take transport for whatever reason so it's not totally um, you know unrelated uh, so I'm going to share as usual, let me see. Okay. okay. Here it is. Okay. So, viajes is um, travel, travel. So, un viaje, like a trip or travel. Y transporte. So, that's the transportation difference. Different, we're going to see different uh, types. So, First thing is, yeah, what can we use to move around? So, of course, as I just said, to get into Spain, most likely you'll use un avión, a plane, avión. And so you will arrive at an aeropuerto, an airport. And then we also have um, tren, which is the, the train course that's quite similar and autobus I mean the full word is autobus but most people in conversation just say bus so you can just say bus much shorter and easier and both trains and buses train and autobus you can get them from una estación so that would be a station so you can imagine that word is also quite similar to the English one. So we have avión, tren, autobús, eh, and the places where you get them, aeropuerto and estación. I didn't include taxi here because, I mean, the word is just exactly the same as in English. You just say taxi. It's also pronounced taxi. Uh, so nothing new there. Uh, that's one you already know then. Now there, there are many of the words that we're going to see that you can use for either type of transport, whether it's the, the plane, the train, the bus. Uh, a lot of the vocabulary they share in common. So for instance, you have asiento, so that's your seat doesn't matter if it's a seat on a plane or a train or a bus, it's still called asiento. And where your asiento, sometimes, you know, they might ask you, do you prefer the window or the aisle? So that's a uh, pasillo, is the aisle, and ventanilla is the window. Uh, ventana, you, maybe you know the word ventana for window, Ventanilla literally is like a small window. And well, I know trains and buses these days, they tend to have big uh, kind of windows or kind of glass. But think of, uh, I mean, they were not like that in the past. And also think about planes, you know, they have those little, so now ventanilla, it's like a small window. So, asiento, and your asiento can be el pasillo o la ventanilla. And then, of course, you need un billete. That's your ticket. And billetes 
we have two kinds. Billete de ida. So literally it's just a ticket to go. Okay, so it's like a one-way ticket. And then the ida y vuelta, it would be a ticket to go and come back. So a return ticket. Um, again, same word for all three of them. Um, and the place where you buy the tickets, you know, especially or if you go to a train or a bus station, I mean, the flights, you normally buy them before, you book them before, but trains and buses, you can just buy them at the station. And the place where you buy them is called una taquilla. You might see, I don't know if you can read there on the picture, you might see that maybe the official name, you go to the station, it says venta de billetes, which literally means sale of okay. tickets. Uh, but when you are, you know, when you're talking in conversation, people refer to this as la taquilla. Um, okay, so... Let's move to the next one. Other words that we have in common for all types of transport. We have la salida, which, well, salida, it, it can mean a couple of things, okay? It can mean uh, an exit, okay? Or more specifically here, let's say you go, you get into the airport and you see a big sign that says salidas. That's the departures because salida or salir, which is the verb, it means to, to leave, you know, to, to go somewhere. So salida is the departure, la llegada is the arrival, el destino of course, your destination, where you're going. And el horario has to do with the time. So the, the schedule, when the, these transports and trains, buses are leaving, arriving, when is the next one? So you could go, for instance, to, um, or even to tourist office and ask if they have a schedule for whatever, the trains to a specific place or for the buses. So you could ask, uh, well, you could just say, tienen un horario, like, do you have a, you know, schedule, horario de tren, horario de autobús, uh, whatever you need. And with the salir and llegar, with these two verbs also, you could ask, you have cuando, which means when. So you can ask, cuando sale, cuando sale el tren, cuando sale el autobús, you know, when, when does the train leave, when does the bus leave, uh, when does whatever, uh, plane leave, and the same thing with llegar. Cuando llega, when does it arrive? Let's say you, you want to know, you want to go from A to B and you want to know, okay, so what time does it leave from here? What time does it get there? So you know how long it's going to take you. Cuando sale, cuando llega. You could ask um, those questions. We're going to see more um, phrases or, you know, how to combine these words later to make more, create more uh, questions that you could ask or even the answers also. But let, let's just first have a look at the vocabulary. There's the main words that we're going to need. And then we just can put them together to make these sentences. So all of these words so far, they're all valid for all uh, transports, planes, uh, trains, buses. Now, these ones here now 
are more specific to planes and airports and you know flying so well, we said that the airport is el aeropuerto okay um i don't know if i mentioned in any of the previous sessions but in well in spanish mostly you pronounce everything that you see with a couple of exceptions but you pronounce almost everything so when you have like in aeropuerto you have there like the a the e the u the e all together you pronounce all of them so that gets you aeropuerto so you are there in el aeropuerto one thing you need to do is um, facturar La, la facturación, so that's the checking. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see the in, in the picture. Actually, it says the you know checking and facturación in yellow. I don't know, it might be a bit too small, but um, that's the checking facturación. El equipaje. Uh, that's your uh, luggage. So you will also see signs for, you know, like uh, to collect your luggage or in this case, there's one here that says equipajes especiales, maybe, you know, things that are too big or have, a, you know, they don't fit through the normal way. So you have to bring them somewhere else. Anyway, it's equipaje, luggage. Um, aduanas, well, I mean, if you're traveling from the EU, you don't need to bother with this. From other places, I don't know, I suppose it depends. Aduanas is customs. Well, you will see a sign there that says aduanas, customs. Uh, el pasaporte, I'm sure you can guess this one, it's the passport. Uh, and then with this, we have this verb embarcar and a few other words that are related to it. So embarcar means to board, to, to board the plane. So related to that, we have la tarjeta de embarque, which is your boarding pass, your boarding card. Okay, una tarjeta is a card. Same word if you are talking about your credit card, debit card, es una tarjeta, it's also tarjeta, so tarjeta is a card. So tarjeta de embarque is your boarding card. And la puerta de embarque, una puerta is a door, so literally is your boarding door or as you say in English, boarding gate. Um, but puerta means um, door. Uh, and anything that has embarque besides is, has to do with boarding. Tarjeta de embarque, puerta de embarque, you know, em anything embarque uh, is, um, has to do with boarding. Um, I I can't really see now the, I don't know if there's any, when I'm sharing the presentation, it's it's very hard, not, not to say impossible, to see the chat. So I'm not sure if, I think I can see it now. I don't know if anyone has any questions so far, no? Okay. No, I don't see anything yet, Maria. Okay, great. And now, and now I open. Hold on, I'm going to, it's just, okay. So I, I had the, where, okay. The airport, we've done the airport. Um, so those words were uh, specific to flying airports. We have now uh, some words that are more specific to trains. Okay, so um, in the case of trains, well, I said before that the station is una estación. Okay, uh, 
you can call it estación de tren, a more, let's say, official name, you might see it uh, written somewhere in, in science, you, you could see estación de ferrocarril, okay? Uh, yeah, I just leave ferrocarril for, for the signs and the more official stuff. In conversation, we say estación de tren, which is easier to say and shorter. But just be aware that if you see, you know, ferrocarril somewhere, it means the train. So um, words that are more specific to trains would be, one of them would be andén, okay? Andén is the platform, okay? So, for instance, if you get a ticket, okay, a, a train ticket, on your ticket, it will have all this information. One of the, one of the pieces of information there will be, uh, well, no, the and then might not be on your ticket. It will be displayed on, on screens probably and it might announce it. Um, but that's the, the platform. Via is where the trains are. So the, the tracks, the train tracks. Okay. Um, Bagon. Now, this, I have two words here because, again, I've noticed that on the tickets, they write coche, which we normally use for car, you know, the car that you drive. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, they use it on the, on the train tickets to refer to the carriage, which in conversation, everybody calls bagon. So I'm not quite sure why on the tickets they call it coche, uh, but I've, I've noticed that. So bagon uh, would be the, the carriage. And then revisor is the person that goes on the train revisando checking your tickets so uh, it's, it's from revisar which is to check so it's the person who checks um, the tickets and actually let me see if I go if I can go back in this one here in the in the middle picture here that's a that's a train ticket. Uh, it's probably a bit small. Sorry, but I'm not sure I, can, I don't think I can make this bigger. But anyway, let me uh, talk you through it. So you have uh, well, first at the top uh, right corner it says viaje a. So it's a it's a trip to, and it has the destination, which in this case uh, was. Santiago, uh, and then underneath you have two times, okay, you have 11.30 and 12.05, uh, 12, uh, sorry, not 12, 11.30 is the departure time, la salida, okay, from Pontevedra in this case, and 12.05, that's la llegada, so that's when it arrives in Santiago. And then under that, on the next line, there are four uh, pieces of information. The first one says tren MD, that's just the kind of train. Okay, there's some that are faster and stop less. There's some others that stop everywhere and take longer. So that's just the type of train. The next piece is coche. So that's what I was just telling you. That's the, um, the carriage that you're supposed to go in. And then you have asiento. So that's your seat. So you get your ticket and you need to check. Okay, first, what uh, carriage am I in? In this case, it says here is number two. So all the carriages outside, they, they are numbered. So you look for number two. And then your asiento, your seat which in this case is 87. 
and then classy. It's just the the class, the category. I mean, there's just there's no different. These trains they don't have different uh, classes. They're all. That's why it says única. It's the only one. Okay. And well, basically that's it, because the rest is just some code for the booking and all that, which you know you don't need when you when you are at the station. So that's uh, on your billete, the tren, all this you know, coche and uh, an asiento. When you um, are on the platform in El Anden, they will announce uh, what via your train is coming through. So, El Tren, they will say something like El Tren procedente de, so the train coming from I don't know where, con destino a, with this whatever other destination. Eh, por la vía, I don't know, vía uno, vía dos, so the, the number of the track, which matches the number that you see on the platform, okay. They will, they will say vía, because and then is where you stand, and vía is where the train is, okay. Um, and then that's it about trains, really. And you just sit down and maybe the revisor will come along and that's it. Um, buses, well, many of the words we've already mentioned. The only ones I can think of that would be specific to buses. Well, again, you have estación now instead of estación de tren. It's estación de autobús or estación de autobuses, of course. Uh, and the autobuses, of course, don't use vías. That's just for trains. And you don't stand on the... Um, and then, that's just for train stations. On bus stations, you are on dársenas. Okay? So dársena... Uh, what you call it in English, dock, I think. So that's uh, for the bus uh, stations, Darsenas. El conductor, this is a bit of a false friend. El conductor is the driver. Okay. Um, if you are traveling from a station, you might be able to get the, the ticket from una taquilla, remember? the ticket office where they sell the tickets not always and definitely if you're traveling from whatever village that doesn't have a station and the buses just have a stop there in the middle of the road you will have to pay the driver el conductor so el conductor is the driver and then the stops, all the different bus stops, they're called paradas, parada de autobús. Okay, so then you can ask, okay, where is the bus stop here? Or is there a bus stop in this town where I can take a bus to? Where does the bus stop? So, parada, which comes from parar, and parar means to stop. So that's that's where it's a stop then. So this is more or less all the, I'd say all the basic main vocabulary about all the, you know, trains, buses, planes. Um, so what we have here is a few combinations, you know, mix and match from here and there to create your own sentences. Um, we saw before um, cuando, which means when, cuando sale, cuando llega, when does it leave, when does it arrive. Uh, donde means where. 
So, see the first question there, ¿dónde está la estación? So, if you want to ask about the location of something, just ¿dónde está? And then you add whatever you are looking for. The station, ¿dónde está la estación? You're looking for your boarding gate, la puerta de embarque. You're looking for the albergue. Donde está el albergue? Any location of anything that you, that you need to know. Donde está? Okay, and just add after that whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, this other word that we have in the next question, donde hay una parada, this, this little word I, H-A-Y, it means there is or there are. So where is there a bus stop? Again, instead of una parada, you can add anything else there. You could even take out donde if you want to add, okay, is there, is there a bus stop in this town? <laughs> or is there, a, I don't know, a pharmacy? Anything that you want to know. Is, can I find this thing here in this place? Just I. I plus whatever you're looking for. Is there a bus stop? Is there a station? Is there, is there a museum? Is there a pharmacy? Is there a supermarket? Whatever you need, you can just add after I. Another very handy word uh, to, you know, that you can use in many situations is the next one, quería. We've probably already seen this when we spoke about food because you can use it to order food. You can use it when you're buying anything to ask for things politely. Quería is like, I'd like. I would like, in this case, a ticket. Un billete de ida, if you just want one way. Un billete de ida y vuelta if you want a return ticket uh, and then you well if you're talking about tickets since today's you know today we're talking about um, travel transport un billete de ida a santiago so i want one way ticket to santiago if you don't if you want it to another town just leave the a there and add your town Un billete o de ida y vuelta. I want a return ticket to whatever town you want to go. Um, but remember, you can use um, quería not just to ask for tickets or in the context of travel and transport. You could use it in any other situation to just ask for things politely. Okay, you could... As I said before, you could use it to order food, your coffee, or, you know, you're going to a shop and, you know, asking for whatever it is that you need. Another question we can use, again, in different um, situations, not just with transport, is cuánto cuesta? And that's how much is it? Imagine before you decide, or I don't know whether to take the train or the bus or the or a taxi. So uh, you might want to compare prices and go and ask, okay, cuánto cuesta? How much is it from here to there, for instance? Um, so that's cuánto cuesta. Another one. Um, a qué hora? So at what time? Again, we're using it here in relation to transport, but you could use it, I don't know, what time does the albergue open? Or if they, you know, they have like a curfew or something at night, what time do they close? Or 
supermarket or anything that has like you know an opening and closing time or time there's something uh, time related uh, attached to it so in this case with those verbs that we saw before salir and llegar to leave and to arrive you could ask a que hora sale el bus de santiago so what time does the um, uh, bus to santiago leave or a que hora llega el tren de santiago what time does the train from santiago um, arrive if it's llega i mean you can combine them any way you like um so okay Maria, we have have some questions if you in the chat okay i'll have a look now that i i'm not Thank sharing you. so i can more easily <laughs> look at the okay. uh, look at the yeah, Gina, the, um, these uh, tongue twisters, I was actually sharing an article about tongue twisters a couple of days ago, because they are uh, great to practice, especially if you want to, you know, uh, tongue twisters, they tend to focus on one sound. Uh, so, for instance, uh, to roll the R, the, there are a few of them uh, that focus on the R. So yeah i r con r figarro i think the version i heard instead of figarro it was more child friendly and says something like guitarra but anyway the idea is the same it's, it's a word with a double r r con r barril eh, rápido corren los carros del ferrocarril and there you have ferrocarril um, so yeah those are great to to practice you know uh, a sound you having difficulty with one particular sound i'm sure there will be a tongue twister <laughs> with just that sound lots of it and and yeah they no, they're, they're great you can start you know uh, slowly and then as, as you find them you know as, as it gets easier you can increase the speed at which you try to pronounce them. And yeah, and they're, they're, fun, they're fun and, and they're a great uh, way to, to practice the pronunciation. Um, pay for a bus. Well, on the bus, I don't think you can. On the bus, uh, I'd say, as far as I know, the ones, these local ones that go from town to town as far as I know, they just take cash. Um, I mean, of course, if you are, uh, if you're going to a station, I mean, when you're buying the ticket at the station, there they, they should have the facilities uh, to get, um, you know, for you to pay with a card. But if you're paying on the bus, I doubt it. I'd say it's cash. Say ninety-five percent. <laughs> it's going to be cash. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's the same. The same, yeah. If you're paying the driver, then I'd say cash. Yeah. So you need some, yeah, change because normally, you know, these buses they're not, um, you know, it's not a huge amount. You're paying a couple of euros something like that um okay ferry well ferry it's uh, it's also ferry okay just uh, make the pronunciation a bit more spanish um and i'm not, i'm not sure there's any any kind of word that i didn't think of ferries to be honest because Although I do know someone who took the ferry from the UK uh, and back, but um, I can't think right now of any word that would be specific to ferries. I mean, you still have tickets, and yeah, the word for ferry is ferry. 
Um, well, I'll think about it. If I think of um, of some specific word for fairies, I'll let you know. Um, uh, okay, the the train, the Spanish uh, train company, which is called Renfe. Oh well. First of all, the website is probably like, I shouldn't say this, but it's probably the worst. And everybody in Spain knows this. There are jokes about how bad Renfe's website is. Um, sometimes, yeah, it works fine. You're quite likely to come to one or two problems. They have this thing that they don't release the tickets. They only release maybe, I think it's two months in advance or if they haven't changed it. So if you are trying to book a ticket more than two months in advance, you won't be able to. You go there and you won't see any available, any available tickets. Uh, so the only thing is just to wait. Um, that's yeah. That's it was even like two days before. Like I knew I wanted to leave on Monday. I think it was like Saturday that I was trying to buy a ticket for. Santa Unless Monday. it's because it's to Porto and it's an international one, that could be an issue. Um, that maybe that's. It was uh, fine. Like there were lots of seats, but. Um, you're well, in the, in the case of Porto, it could be because, you know, you're crossing into Portugal and I don't know, you know, in Portugal, it's another company. So I don't, I don't know exactly how they do it. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, they have this two month uh, thing. So if you're trying to book more than two months in advance, you won't be able to. And one thing I, I didn't add in the slides, but it's worth mentioning, especially if you're going to be taking a few trains in Spain is that if you're over 65, okay, I'll write it here. There's one thing called tarjeta dorada. Okay, that's for uh, anyone over 65. I think you have to pay for it something like five or six euros, but then you get. Uh, especially if you travel Monday to Thursday, you get quite a substantial discount on the price of your tickets. Uh, I mean, it might be worth if you're, you know, taking it a lot or maybe taking a big, uh, like a long distance trip where, you know, paying for the cards, the discount you're getting might be bigger than that. So it might be, but anyway, it's just, um, you can just get it at the station, uh, just as you get in your ticket. Um, but, and that's, yeah, for over 65. Um, people still use cash, well, less, um, less, but there are still places that resist <laughs> the card for some reason. Um, which is yeah weird uh, these days, but people use uh, cards much more than than before. But again, like for instance, I haven't been on a bus since, so you know, uh, the beginning of the pandemic. So I wouldn't be able to tell you now. For instance, if if now the conductores, if the drivers now have you know, if they can get payment with card. I know before it was just cash, it could have changed. Um, but yeah, uh, cards are used more, but still, you know, I don't know, like uh, older people, for instance, in general, they don't like to use uh, cards. And um, yeah, so there, there are places that they just, they, ju they don't even have the, the facilities for you to pay by card. <laughs> as strange as it may sound uh, <laughs> in this day and age, but it happens. 
Okay, so any any more questions there? You want to try to make your own phrases, your own sentences, get a bit of practice in there. You you can unmute yourselves if you like, if you if you want to say something. No, no questions, no, um, should I make up some, <laughs> some phrases and test you, see if you were paying yeah. attention? To practice, that would be good. Um, let me see. So how would you say, um, I don't know, let me see. Um, do you have, or can I have a return ticket to Madrid and how much is it? Mm. <laughs> is that too much? Carrie, <laughs> una uh, billete de ida de Madrid. ¿Y cuánto cuesta? Ok. De ida es one way. Okay. And if you want a uh, return ticket. Uh, anyone remember what a return ticket is? Uh, y, vu y vuelta. Ok, ya. Yeah. Un billete de ida y vuelta. So, yeah, the whole thing would be quería... Un billete de ida y vuelta a Madrid. So that would be first part. And then you can ask, ¿cuánto cuesta? Very good, yeah. And um, how about if you want to ask... Um, if there's a taxi, you're in a small place and I don't know, let's say you, there's no place to stay there and you need to go, I don't know, forward or go back a few miles and so you to take a taxi to your accommodation and you need to ask, okay, is there a taxi here? I owe taxi. I own taxi, yeah, or I taxis. You can just ask in the plural, are there taxis here? Uh, I taxis. Well, you, you can add a key, which is here, okay? I taxis a key, I, or just I taxis, okay? It's, it's fine, okay? Very good. Um, and um, how about you are at the airport and um, you need to ask where your boarding gate is? Oh boy. Sunday after the Puerto de Emba. Okay. Yes, yes, very good. Well, normally you would have, a, 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 if you already have the number, obviously you can ask Puerta de Embarque and add the number there. Or if you're just looking for the access to the boarding gates, normally access all of them through, you know, you have to go through security and whatever. Um, you can just leave it general like that. Plural, sort of la puerta is... So I, I'll, I'll write it here in the chat in the plural. Okay. okay. So that would be donde están las puertas de embarque. De, eh, de embarque, that part doesn't change. Uh, the part that becomes plural is the, the gates, las puertas, just add an S there. 
to make it plural. How about, uh, how do you say flight number? Okay, uh, a flight is un vuelo, el vuelo, so the flight number is el número de vuelo. Número, that's the number, de vuelo, the number of flight, literally. So you would say like, um, if you wanted to say, my, I'm looking for the gate for flight number three, you could mm -hmm. say, numero de vuelo tres. Sí. Mm -hmm. O vuelo tres. Yeah. Sí, sí. Sí, sí. Yeah. Anything else? Well, then, oh, me again. Um, no problem. So, so like a train number. No, you wouldn't normally say a train number though. You'd say a train to Santiago. Or... Yeah, the trains you normally, you know, it's not like the flights. So you just say, okay, yeah, the train to Santiago. And then when they announce them, they would say the train. Usually, the way they usually make the announcements on the station is um the train especially like if you're not at the starting point you know uh, like for instance where i am if i'm going to santiago like that ticket i show you there the trains for me they normally start their journey in vigo uh then they stop in, in pontevedra and then they stop in santiago and they go on to a coruña so the, may, the way they would make the announcement normally would be el tren procedente de Vigo. So the train coming from uh, Vigo. El tren procedente de Vigo con destino a Coruña. So it's procedente de... Hola. Hola. Um, I, I think we had some issues with the time today because they changed yes, the daylight savings time. Yes, so yeah, Save. I was convinced it was at 7 p.m. Spanish time, um, uh, it was at 6. <laughs> uh, okay, procedente de and con destino. Ah, so procedente de coming from whatever place is coming to and with the destination. Transfers. Well, normally if you buy a ticket, when you're buying a ticket, they will tell you if there's a, you know, it would be on the ticket if there's a, if there's a transfer. Um, yeah, it's um, a transfer is un trans, transbordo. Transporter. Yeah, I'll just hold on. Trans. Yeah. But well, let's say if you, let's say you're looking for train tickets on the Renfe website and there's one that, you know, it's not direct, you have to change trains, it, you, it will be marked in there. So, it will tell you, okay, you have to go from here to there, and, and this is where you change trains. So you know, you have to get off it's the train there. Actually, and get on that there. difficult to figure out. I really, when when you're actually there, it's it's you know, it, it's not that difficult to figure out. There's usually boards up, and you could you know, you can see your yeah. destination and the time and the platform. You're yeah. not doing sort of totally with with no support. You know, the boards yeah. will, you know, make it quite clear. Hmm. Yeah, normally, uh, I mean, transbordos should be okay. Yeah, shouldn't be too, too difficult to manage. I think the ones that, you know, 
tend to be more confusing are the airports because I suppose also they're bigger, they have a lot, lot more people in there and all these different places that you have to go through, you know, the, remember the facturación, uh, the, you know, checking, security, boarding, this, that, mm -hmm. gates, boarding passes, uh, all these different things. Um, and, and these days, I mean, Google Maps even tells you what, you know, you put your journey in, it even tells you where the bus stops are. It, you know, I used it in Poland last year and it would tell me to cross the road to get the bus stop. It's traveling is much easier these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what, well, you know, still, it, it, it gives you an extra, you know, <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank yeah. you very, very much. I'm sorry you had no late lunch. So I don't know if anyone else has any final question. Maria, Jim Martin uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I'm curious just uh, how your program works, uh, what we learn on a monthly basis on these Zoom meetings. Uh, this is my first time. Uh, I, I guess I don't want you to be repetitive if everybody else knows what's going on and I don't. And I apologize, everybody. Uh, but uh, if you could just briefly explain to me. Explain. The program and, and how we work how you do these monthly ones? Do we just ask questions? Or yeah, no, there... these, these monthly ones, I mean, sorry about the mix up with the time today because yeah, I was Great. saying and telling everybody seven and I was convinced it was seven until yeah. two hours ago. <laughs> um, so I almost didn't make it myself. Uh, <laughs> So um, the way we've been doing, usually uh, first I have like a, put together a little, you know, presentation with all the main vocabulary phrases that I think might be useful on the topic. And then at the end, yeah, we have a bit of time to, you know, ask questions or yeah, like, like today, get a bit of practice. Um, that's how we're doing it. Okay, so today you're into the question mode. I've, I missed the whole first part then. Yeah, I mean, as I said, <laughs> sorry about that. That was a total, no problem. I, no I problem. didn't have a clue. And if it mm -hmm. hadn't been for Facebook this time around, I, I would have been waiting till seven uh, <laughs> to join. Right. So, but yeah, the replays, um, the replays, uh, Corey and Lee later, um, this has been, it's been recorded. So later they will upload it onto their um, YouTube channel, the Camino okay. Cafe. So ah. you can, so we watch can we look at it later. There. Yes. Oh, yes. Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. No problem. Yes. On this topic, uh, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to tell about our, our fun adventure um, returning after a Camino from Porto to Santiago. Uh, we then took a taxi to Muxia. Um, so we got up early from Muxia to take the bus back to Santiago, which worked great. Um, they dropped us off at the very modern train station in Santiago de Compostela. And we bought a train ticket for as far as we could from there that we understood uh, to Vigo, um, which is kind of the border, okay. their area. So we took that very um, fast train to Vigo, um, got off and wanted to buy a ticket um, for an, a different train to get to Porto. Um, and they were kind enough to explain, they found someone to speak English to explain it was a different train station. So uh, we, because, <laughs> yeah, they used to only have one train station uh, in Vigo, but yeah. now since they introduced the fast trains, 
they built a new one. So some trains go to the old one, some goes to the new one. Yeah, I, that's a bit confusing now. Yeah. So by so we got a took a taxi to the other train station, had missed the only connection to Porto um, that um, departed until about 10 p.m. It was all fun. It was all funny. So they were many Camino Angels this day. Um, they instructed us how to catch a city bus and what bus number. And we took a city bus tour around town, which was a blast because we got to see the city from a bus uh, with many stops uh, to the bus station where we bought a bus ticket. Um, oh, how did this work? There was another snag. Oh, another bus. There was not a train to take. So we took a bus all the way to Porto and then a taxi from the Porto station to downtown where we were staying. Uh, well, we learned a lot that day, and I learned not to make assumptions that there would be a, <laughs> a, a connecting uh, train yeah, ride. Yeah, <laughs> no, the, the, big old, the big old thing, yeah, it's a bit confusing now because there used to be just the one station, and, you know, yeah, that's what you assume, that you get there and you just get off one train and you right. can get on to the next one. Exactly, but uh, I learned not to make assumptions. It was fun, though, and many helpful people. I did something really, really, really dumb on my second Camino. Um, I was booking a flight. Um, well, my first one, the, booking a flight from Santiago. First one's back to Paris. The second one, I was booking a flight to Milan because that was where I had uh, um, traveled from. But... I was pretty sure there was a Santiago airport, but I wasn't seeing Santiago. And there was a Coruña. And so I booked a flight there, got myself to the airport at Santiago and was told, no, this is at the airport in a Coruña. And oh. luckily I was there very early. So I ended up taking a taxi to the airport at a Coruña hundred year olds you know that mistake so do not do that you know if you're, when you're booking there is an airport in Santiago the other one I think it, it is a yeah. Acuna, right that yeah one. yes it is yeah there's one there's right. one in Santiago there's oh, one in Coruña, and there's another one in Vigo but yeah. yeah yeah don't get them mixed up and I should have known better and I sort of did but I was just a little sort of agitated and just a little anxious and not sort of like ah and and I just booked away anyway it all worked out but uh <laughs> don't do that don't do that was an expensive mistake it was an expensive mistake but fortunately yeah, the other thing to watch early. out for is some of the buses um there are two buses that run on the same route for example Burgos to Bilbao and they leave within five or 10 minutes of each other, but one is the fast bus and the other one will stop at every village stop along the way. Yeah. And if you're trying to get to an airport for a flight, and Make you're sure on the you bus get the fast one. Longer, you yeah, know, yeah. you need to be just, just one thing to be aware of, because you, if you book your ticket at the machine, <laughs> yeah then, usually the fast one they would have something there like express or something like that you yeah. know um yeah because the it's other ones to be aware of forever well. they stop everywhere mm, i know <laughs> right yeah well, Maria, thank you so much for your time. You so graciously give your time to us every month and we cannot thank you enough for everything you do for our group. Um, if everybody, anybody that came on late, we are so sorry. We didn't even yes. think about time change, had no idea that that was going to affect so many people. So sorry about that, but um, hopefully you can co go back and watch the recording. And again, Maria does has so many resources on her website, which is SpanishForCamino.com. And you can also get on her Facebook, which is Spanish for the Camino um, as well. She has a lot of tips and great ways to learn. And she also offers private lessons. So sign up with her. She's amazing. 
Um, and again, we're so grateful for your time and thank you to everybody for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you have, as I always say, if you have ideas, suggestions for future sessions or topics that we could cover, now's your time. You can just say it, write it in the chat if you prefer. Yes. You, you um, I would love, um, you know, how you come up upon other pilgrims and you start talking, like, where are you from? They don't, they, uh -huh. uh, yeah. eres, things like that. Um, like basic conversation between pilgrims. Uh, why are you doing the pilgrimage? Things like that would be really fun. Okay. Yep. I'll make a note of that. Yeah. Great. And if, if you have any, or you know, just send us a mess, send me a message, send Corey and Lee a message. Animals we see on the Camino. Okay. <laughs> 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 those little lizards in the Pyrenees, what are those guys called? I don't even know. Lagartijas. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of birds. Lagartijas, yeah. I'm not great at birds' uh, names. <laughs> yes. What about the slugs? Oh, yeah, slugs, they're, they're called babosas. Yeah, there's oh. uh, plenty of those. <laughs> At least in Galicia, anyway, when it starts raining and they all come out. And they're huge, some of them. Anyway. If you can think of any other, you have any other suggestions, you can, yeah, you can contact me, you can contact um, Lee or Corey. You could do a uh, tortilla baking demo. Well, we can do some, some, yeah, kind of <laughs> recipe. Okay. One day, yeah. Ah, everything's we'll online now. Hmm? Muchas gracias, Maria. Adios. Adios, Jim. Muy bien. Gracias. De nada. María, hasta el jueves. Hasta el jueves, David. Chao.